It's no secret that Love Island has lost what charm it had. Last night they aired the new season and I remember sat watching it and I was just thinking to myself that this is kind of, well, almost somewhat just tiresome to watch. It's just a little bit boring. And I know I'm not the only one who thinks that because as I head to my various different applications and software which I use to track the trends and to see what people are talking about, I realised that Love Island isn't showing up like it used to or like you would expect it to. And as you look into this more, you see that the winter edition of Love Island, the last series that was on, was one of the lowest ratings it got. But here's the thing, Love Island should be doing very well because that kind of TV and that kind of programme is doing very well. If you go on to Disney Plus or Amazon or Netflix, it's loaded with similar kind of formatted programmes. Things that we would consider to be trashy TV, just bingeable television. And Love Island is one of the originators. So Love Island should be doing very well. So the big question isn't, has it lost its charm? As I said in my first sentence of this video, it's no secret that it has lost its charm. The big question is, how could it lose its charm? And why did it lose its charm? Well, throughout this video essay, as you may call it, or opinion piece, I'm going to shed some light on what I found and what I think to why Love Island has lost what charm it had. And that really comes down to two factors. You see, Love Island as a program, as many reality TV programs are, are held up by two pillars. On the one hand, you've got the production, how well it's made, the format in which it's showcased. And on the other hand, you've got the contestants, the star, the talents of the show. If both these pillars work together, you have a brilliant show. If they don't work, you have the downfall. You can't have one without the other. And in the case of Love Island, I believe strongly that both those pillars have lost its charm. So let's start with that production side of things. The one thing Love Island has that all these other new reality TV shows don't have is nostalgia. It's been around for the longest time. It's got a fan base. People watch it and they reminisce about older times they used to watch it. It's refreshing knowing that once a year you've got this show on where you know the format, you know what's going to happen, and you can just sit back without any such surprises. But as time goes on, they have to change things that affect that. A big thing that we've seen in recent times is the host. Now, I'm not saying Maya Jammer is doing a bad job. I think it's actually on the contrary. I think she's doing a very good job, and I think a lot of people agree, and the research that I've done showcase that she is very well received. However, no matter how well received she is, she's still never going to be Caroline Flack. Now, Caroline was a brilliant choice to host Love Island, but not only that, is she did it for such a long time that it's been drilled into our minds that Love Island is Caroline Flack. The host becomes the show. It's a big part of the show. So when you lose that for someone else, even if the other person is brilliant at doing it, it just doesn't hit the same. But of course, Caroline Flack isn't with us anymore. And the reason that she is not with us has a direct impact on the show. Because if you look, you can see just how many people on the show have actually gone down the same path and how many people on the show have ended up taking their own lives, in part, blaming the show and the treatment and the safeguarding they've got in place. And Love Island isn't the only show that doesn't safeguard people's mental stability. We've seen it before here in the UK, we used to have a show called Jeremy Kyle. The exact same thing happened there where the show was subsequently cancelled. In order for Love Island not to get cancelled, they've got to change things. So once again, all that stuff that we know to expect and all that stuff we love, the games, the format, the way the show is run, it all has to be changed in order for the show to be able to remain on air. There has to be more safeguarding in place. Which, although is brilliant, and I'm never going to say that they shouldn't be 
doing a better job at safeguarding, the stuff that they take away, unfortunately, some of the things that were the worst for people's well-being was actually the things that made the best television. Now, obviously, if you've never seen Love Island before, I'm going to assume everyone has, but maybe you're just doing it to have the conversation. Love Island is always a big conversational piece. You don't want to watch the show, but you do want to understand a little bit more about it. You might watch video like this one, and I understand people do that because I do that as well with other things that I don't necessarily want to watch, but a big conversation starter, so I'll watch them or I'll listen to them if it's music, just so I've got something to say. So for all those people, let me just quickly explain Love Island. It's a show where you get young, attractive contestants go on to essentially find love, they're coupled up together and they're all budged in this one villa, i.e. let the drama ensue as people find love with one another and break it off with one another and cheat on one another and you've got TV gold. Now throughout this they do these kind of mini challenges to keep the show interesting. It's worth noting they have no contact with the outside world. So one of these challenges was where they show the contestants newspaper headlines or what people are tweeting about them and they have to guess who that is about and it's their kind of insight to what people are saying at home. This was one of the games that had to be cancelled because mentally talking it was very mean and it's very draining. If you've been stuck on this program for a few weeks, you've had no contact with the outside world and the first thing you hear is that people are saying negative things about you. That's really disheartening, right? It's really going to upset you and it's going to make you react, which is exactly what the production team wanted. They wanted a reaction because that whole reaction is going to be filmed on TV and then you're left in a situation, well, well, what do I do? Am I that upset that I leave the show and go home? Or do I need to stay here to try and change the public opinion about me? It was just one of those games that was looked down on a lot in terms of safeguarding, but did make the best television. Another similar version of this is the drinking. The show is kind of split between the, what happens in the daytime and what happens at night. And at night is when they used to have a few drinks. They used to get drunk and of course you've got a villa full of frustrated and attractive young people who are all going to get drunk and it's all going to kick off, right? This is when all the drama used to happen. Once again, really great for reality television. Let's just get all these people really pissed and whatever embarrassing things they do is going to be aired to millions of people at home. But not great for the mental stability of those contestants who might do things when they're drunk that doesn't really represent them or that what they wouldn't or what they wouldn't necessarily do in real life, but they're doing because they're on a TV show, and they're doing it because they're drunk, and they're more, they feel more liberated, they regret it the next day, but it's already gone out to millions of people. Really bad for their mental stability. The problem is that, unfortunately, these were the best parts of the show. So when you lose that, you lose, A, the nostalgia part of it. We're no longer watching it excited to see these games and the the night time but also when they do leave these things in to try and retain some of what made the show work and to retain that original format but in a much safer way it just seems to become boring so instead of just losing the games completely they still do the games but just a lot more safer games they still split the show between daytime and nighttime, but now at night they're not allowed to drink, or I think they're allowed one glass of Prosecco per night or one beer per night, so you don't get that reaction. They still keep the format because they know people love the format, so it's still 50% daytime, 50% nighttime, but it's just the 50% nighttime has now became incredibly boring. They could swap this up, think of a whole new segment to add instead of the games, think of a whole new mini challenge series. They could forget about the nighttime and do more of the daytime. Or maybe at nighttime they could introduce something completely new, but they don't do that because it's almost like they're scared to drift away from what made the show popular. But by hanging on, but in a more watered down way, it just seems very boring.
And this whole thing has led to the show becoming incredibly predictable. And it's not about just the sticking with the format, because like I said, we love that. It's nostalgic. To, it feels good to know what's going to come. But because they don't have those more natural, authentic reactions that make great television, they're always trying to force those reactions. So everything becomes scripted. So the whole thing loses its authenticity. And we'll talk more about that authenticity with the next section, with the contestants. But there is another factor in the production that includes the contestants that I'd like to touch on. And that is the quota they seem to be trying to hit. Love Island, although trashy TV, that a lot of people would say has no real value, which, hey, doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing. It's just something that's semi-entertaining to watch. It still holds quite the high standard in media. Because, let's remember, this is a show about a bunch of attractive young people stuck in a villa together. And there's a lot of talk about this show. So the people they choose to represent the show is the people that they're saying are young and attractive people. And what I'm talking about here is the diversity. Because usually you can expect about 12 contestants to come and go throughout the show. And if you have six of those muscly white men and six of those skinny white women, it becomes a representation that that is what attraction is. When we know that that's simply not the case. So they need to include diversity because a lot of different people watch this show and they're going to want to see representation of themselves on the show, which is great. Right? That is fantastic. And I'm not saying it's lost its charm because it's more diverse. But what I'm saying is now they seem to concentrate more on hitting this diversity quota than they do the actual talent. Because let's remember these contestants, whatever people may say about them, they are the talent, their entertainment, they're adding great value to reality TV. That right there, the way they act on camera, the way they can be memorable, that is a talent. People will say a lot of these people are talentless, but I differ in that belief because I think in order to be memorable, in order to stick in people's mind, that right there, that does take talent. And the way the show used to be ran is let's find the best talent. The only split was we need X amount of females and Y amount of males. These could have easily been 12 half Indian, half Scottish people from the same town. If that's what made the best talent, that's what made the best talent. Whereas now they concentrate more on we need one person to fit this quota, one person to fit this quota. So you always have the same thing now in the show where... You have one person with a disability. You've got a man who's not so muscular. Maybe you've got a woman who's a bit more on the larger side. You've got all different kind of cultures in there. You've got all different kinds of accents in there. And it's beautiful to see that diversity. But it takes you about 20 minutes into watching the show to realise that these people don't really gel together as much. Because it's not just about the individual talent but it's thinking about how these people react differently, right? It's like, it's like a restaurant and a menu. You don't just have 12 great dishes. You have 12 dishes that are going to complement each other. Hey, this dessert will go really well with this main, and this main will go really well with this wine. But if you don't like any of that, well, on the opposite side, we've got contrast. Well, we've got this dish here. If you're a vegetarian, here's a great veggie burger. You're a meat eater, here's a great steak. It's not just about how the dishes work on their own, but it's about how they interact with each other and how they create this versatile, diverse menu. I know this is kind of like a slim likening, but just hear me out here, because when it comes to Love Island, it's how these people act on their own, and it's how these people are going to act together. On top of that, remember, like I said, they're now about safeguarding. So they've got to go through the kind of mental stability of each person. Back in the day, the most unsuitable mentally made for the best TV. The absolute worst way to go about it, let's just find the most unstable person and put them in a villa with a bunch of other unstable person live on television. It's almost as if 
They have their quota and they're picking each an individual person judging by their photo and their photo alone. No interviews and no thought process going into how these people interact. And that sums up that first pillar, the production. Then we move on to that second pillar, the contestants themselves. The main issue with the contestants is it's no longer about the show. The show used to be about finding love, right? But now it's about how well that can do for your career. Because we've seen this in the past where when people would leave the show, even without winning, they would gain hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of followers on social media, which would then attract all the brands that they loved, all the fashion houses, makeup brands, sports brands that they love to come and work for them. And they were subsequently given the opportunity to, once they left the show, to become stars in their own right and to become very wealthy individuals. And that's what it became about. So it was no longer about love. So the interactions that the contestants have on the show isn't about trying to find love. It's about just trying to make an impact and just gain the most fame when you leave the show. Often, we don't even remember the person that won the show because that's not what it's about anymore. You can be in there for two episodes and create a wealthy lifestyle for yourself once you come out. So that's what it's about, is a bunch of people now fighting, not to find love, but fighting to find fame, fighting to be the most memorable. And what that leads to is everyone falling into a stereotype. Because 90% of people that leave the show do not find any fame. 90% of the people that leave the show are forgotten about within weeks. So people going into the show are seemingly looking at the most successful people and replicating what they did. It becomes less about reality and more about acting. And these people are not actors, so this does not come off great. So what we end up hearing is a lot of the same phrases, a lot of people trying to play a character, a lot of people trying to have a catchphrase to come up with some kind of catchphrase that they will be remembered for, or to act in a way that's going to be spoke about. Last night's episode, I think we was about 25 minutes in, and I already heard the same stereotypical stuff. What's your type? What's your type on paper? I like tall, dark, and handsome, nice teeth, nice eyes. I heard the same, the same kind of throwaway phases that other people in the past have used. And why is that happening? It's because everyone is acting like the people who have already been on the show. They're acting like a Love Islander should act as opposed to acting like themselves. So even if the production team is doing a great job in picking the contestants, once they get in the island, they change completely to suit this narrative of what's worked before. Which is why the whole contestant part of it comes off, like I said, unauthentic. And this really shows with the way they interact with each other. Because the great thing about the show was two people would find actual love, or at least very strong lust. And what was great about it was to see the friction that would come of that. But that's just not happening anymore. Even when people are together, it all seems a little bit fake. You always get these people at the beginning. It's almost like it's a big game to who can make the most impact. So you get people coming in who are going to be together for the entirety of the show and they're going to be really lovey-dovey and they're going to make this big gesture of asking someone out during the show where they'll get all the other contestants involved to help them with this big kind of proposal of asking someone to be their boyfriend or to be their girlfriend, which could seem cute and definitely did the first time we've seen it, but now we're expecting it every single episode. And even when you get people who are, they do have friction. From the stories we've heard of people that are left, that a lot of that friction is set up by the production team, and the contestants on their own, knowing that the friction is going to be spoke about the most at home, you think, is there really any friction, or are they just really trying to make an impact? So just to conclude this entirety of this video essay on how Love Island lost its charm, to break it down into one word, of why that happened. Inauthentic. It's lost all sense of the word authentic. 
a little bit more of a casual video today. Uh, my last video was the big video, the, the Philip Schofield one, which I was so happy with the reaction that got. Not just the fact that it was one of my most viewed videos ever, but what people were saying on it and the feedback that I got was just so amazing that it really inspired me to work on more of those bigger topics and those bigger issues. But I really don't want to become this YouTuber that just talks about exposing people and just talks about the serious things. Every now and again, I want to bring it down and just have a casual conversation with you about something that's less, for place of a better word, important. And I think this topic here and how Love Island has lost its charm is the perfect is the perfect one. Because I know it's something that I'm talking about with people now when I see them, and I am going to be talking about them as the show goes on. So I thought it would be great to have you involved in that conversation. So with that being said, if you do have anything to add or anything to say, your own opinion, do drop it in the comments below. I reply to every single comment, no matter how many or little they are. So do comment, even if it's negative, even if it's positive, you're going to get a reply from me. And do not forget to subscribe for more videos because I've got a lot of videos in the works. I've got a lot of videos I'm working on, which are bigger videos. And I can't wait to share those with you. So until the next video, goodbye.